All right, so what I'm going to do here today is uh, review my newly acquired <clears throat> Hofner German made 500 slash 1, commonly known as Beetle Bass, that I recently acquired. I've had um, Icon, <clears throat> well, Ignition Icon versions. I've had a contemporary one for a while. I've had a club bass contemporary for a while. Got rid of all of those. Well, I, actually, I do have a um, ignition bass, Chinese made, the common one, you know, like the $300 one. I'm going to do an eventual comparison between that and this one. But first, I wanted to go over uh, specifically the German one here that I just acquired maybe a couple of weeks ago. And that's uh, the first German Hofner I've ever owned. Uh, and I especially wanted to get one that was natural. I just like the look of natural. As you can see behind me, I've got guitars that are natural. I just like the natural look. And so um, this has a spruce top and um, looks like maple neck, maple back, maple sides. <clears throat> really nice um, kind of a quilted maple. Um, and what I noticed is, this is a 2014. Let's see. I'm going to just kind of give you my review as I go along. It's not going to be categorized like all my likes and my dislikes. It's just going to be what I notice as I'm showing you this. Um, rosewood fretboard. And um, I think the craftsmanship on these are great. I mean... The, just the just the craftsmanship is really really good. Um, I gotta say that it's just excellent craftsmanship. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I would say is, if I was designing this in the factory, and I said, okay, we're gonna make some uh, beetle bases, but we're not gonna do them sunburst or black or <clears throat> crazy colors. We're just going to do some natural ones and, and put those out there. We're not going to do a lot of them, but we're going to do we're going to do some of them. So, let's get some really nice wood together, and we're going to we're going to just paint them with a clear coat and um, sell them and see if people like them. I love that that kind of look. I, when I saw this base with just natural, not sunburst or looking like Paul McCartney's, which I love. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to keep track of my time here. And my monitor's over there, but you're right over here, and you're more important than my mo monitor monitor that I have to keep kind of looking at anyway. So I really like the blonde look, the natural look. But if I were them, I don't know if you can see the stripes. At least they made it symmetrical. <laughs> it's like it's it's part of the wood. It's a darkening of the uh, spruce, which uh, sometimes you see on spruce tops. You kind of see streaking on that. Uh, guild 12 string right there it's a spruce top with kind of streaks you know it's cool um i would just think if i was doing a top like this of a very expensive base you know two thousand three thousand dollar base i would try and get a really unified spruce top you know without these stripes going down the center i mean like i say they did make it symmetrical maybe it was the wood and they opened it up like that um I would have tried to find something that was really consistent, really just, you know, consistent on the top because it's so much seen by the public. But anyway, I can live with it. Um, like I said, the craftsmanship is excellent. The back, the neck is really nice. Um, it's not real thin, but it's not real fat. Um, so it's it's really good neck. Um, <clears throat> you can see the quilted maple on the back and sides. The um, inlays or the binding and all the work like that is really done well the one thing i would say is negative about this and i'm not sure how they do their lacquering but um this is a 2014 and it's already got quite a bit of checking going on little cracks in the finish yeah you can really see it on, on certain i don't know if i can get it i don't know if i can get you guys to see it but <clears throat> it doesn't seem like it eh. Can't really see it, but in a certain light, it looks like spider webs on it, um, on the back too. Nothing on the neck that I can tell. So I don't know what it is on this. No, it's on the back too. Um, I was going to say, I, I thought it might have just been on the spruce top. 
but it's on the back, it's on the maple too. You don't really see it, you don't really notice it, you know, and, and you know, that lacquer, when it gets over time, it cracks and checks like you see on a lot of old Les Pauls, um, which is fine, it's part of the age. When something is seven years old and it's cracking like that, I kind of wonder like, okay, maybe you guys need to use a different lacquer or a different base or some sort of primer or, you know, so you don't get that checking. But anyway, um, okay, I only got a few more minutes. I'm run by the way, I'm running this bass directly into my interface. It's not going through an amp. You're hearing directly the bass and all the volumes are up. Um, this is kind of the standard way that I play it, you know, just uh, both pickups full. The solo is not on, it's on the rhythm position. So, um, to me, when I think you run a bass directly into the board, there's there's no there's no modifications. Like I have a Fender Bassman amp, which has a lot of different um, options on the tone that you can really bring things out and you know really shape the tone. I like running them direct for the example because then you, there's nothing hiding in between that. There's no amp modifications. So um, it sounds really good. To me, these kind of basses, which sound a lot like a, a short scale P bass, sometimes when you're playing them by yourself, they don't really sound that good. It's on do, 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 do. But when you play it with a band, it seems like it just fits right in that frequency that doesn't interfere with, say, an acoustic guitar doesn't interfere with a uh, vocalist, like a tenor, even baritone. Um, doesn't interfere in those frequencies. You really get kind of your own frequency when you have those kind of P bass, dull, dull, dull kind of sounding basses. And then if you're playing something more funk, you want more a broader tone spectrum. But there's something about these that are really nice. Those would fit really good in a band. You'd hear them really well. Anyway, um, I really like the, the sound of that, you know, when you're playing with a band. Um, uh, so the negative thing was the finish. That's the only thing I've found so far, other than I'm, I'm used to having not, not the uh, uh, dot markers here, but I really noticed that I really depend a lot on the side markers, and there's no side markers. <laughs> there's no side markers. So I have to really think, okay, where's the fifth fret? Boom, boom, boom. Or the twelfth fret, I have to kind of get to a point where I see something on the finish that maybe tells me, okay, it's right around here. <laughs> there, I get it by you know just getting used to the instrument. But I really depend a lot on the <clears throat> three, five, seven, nine, twelve, you know, uh, side markers, and they don't have side markers. But I'm getting used to it. I'm getting more used to uh, just knowing where I need to be. So the other thing is. Um, I notice on the icon bases or ignition bases that I'd have to back off the front pickup because it was so bassy. The whole bass was real bassy. This is the other way around. I had to lower this uh, bridge pickup because it was so hot. It was so high and it was hot that usually what I have to do to get some really good sounds, these are both up all the way, is I'll have to back off this pickup, which I never used to have to do on any of the Chinese ones. Um, if I want to get more of a rounded sound, it's a little bit more of a rounded sound, which would still sound good in a mix. Because you you put that back pick up, you get that sort of almost fretless kind of boom, 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 boom. Keep track of my time. Oop, I gotta finish this up real quick. So anyway, um, and if I put on the uh, kind of boost, it's like a boost thing. You can hear how much it boosts. It's actually distorting. Flipping right there. You can hear how it clips. But if I back off this back pickup, it helps. Put this back pickup back on. It starts, whoops, back it off. So it's it's actually got a lot of output, a lot of good tone. That's a good, that's a really good tone for um, 
cutting into a mix. Maybe by itself it sounds a little bit flat, flat kind of sound. I don't know. Anyway, and then um, I've heard that Paul McCartney plays with the solo switch on and the bass on, which would give you this tone. See, I can't, if I don't see the side markers. And see, I missed it. I'm still missing it. Anyway, I think Paul McCartney might have played this way. It sounds like it. And then if you played with a pick, you get that sort of... a little uh Twelve minutes in. Um, so the negative, the positive things is I think it's really well made, very light, hollow body, has a great sound. Uh, pickups are good. I don't like how they're adjusted by these little side screws. Kind of. I like the way that the uh, Chinese um, one with more of a typical way of raising and lowering the pickups. These are kind of weird. Anyway, um, so. I'm gonna put a pick guard on this too, the perloid pick guard, and I'll change the, the control plate to the perloid. I think it'll look a little bit classier. Um, I kinda like the look of a pick guard on these. Anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. Let me know what you guys think. This is an actual German Hofner, 2014. I like the blonde look. Um, don't wanna be a total copy of Paul McCartney, although I love Paul McCartney. Love his bass. Love his playing. And let's do one with just the treble pickup. Treble pickup. Whoop. Hey! What did I do? Right. There we go. That's, that's just the treble pickup. Let me do it with fingers. Which is really... Almost sounds fretless. All the way up. Yep. It's very hot. Need to probably lower the pickup a little bit. It's the German Hofner bass, 5000 slash one, blonde, blondie, with a spruce top, with some checking, maple back and sides, maple neck, excellent construction. Is it worth the price? If you like this kind of bass, I would say yes, it's worth the price. I would definitely say it is worth the price. But you gotta like these kind of basses. If you don't, if you want a jazz bass or some of these boutique basses, th this sound doesn't make you want to. It's a little bit hard to do that on these basses. I mean, you could, somebody would. I'm sure they would. I'm sure they, they would. Back to those pickups. Anyway, I gotta get out of here. All right, guys, we'll see you later.